right, Shirley Sherrod's heard from the president, had a good talk, no direct apology, but he admitted that the government did drop the ball. You think she'll hear from Andrew Breitbart? He's the one who Breitbarted her, basically, posted that edited blurb of her NAACP speech on his website, portrayed her as a racist when the full speech showed that she's not. Ended up getting her fired from the USDA, as you know, and then Breitbart well, he said he wasn't targeting Sherrod, that he was just trying to expose racism in the NAACP. The example backfired on him and proved the opposite of his point. And he's not apologizing. Sherrod's got some questions for him, though. Check out what she told Anderson Cooper last night. What has he done to, pro pro to promote unity among the races? Tell me, let me tell him to come forward and tell us what he's done. I haven't seen him do anything but try to divide us, you know. Where does he think this will take us? What, what does he think this will accomplish? I'd like to hear him answer are, are that. You? And I'd like him to show me how he's not a racist. There you go, Shirley. Well, I guess you could say it's the mixed blessing of the Internet, right? Sure, it puts the world at all of our fingertips. After all, when's the last time you actually had to slog through the Dewey Decimal System to find a nugget of information? But that convenience comes at a price. This week, a viral video, as you know, convicted Shirley in the court of public opinion. That is until we learn the real facts. We're nowhere to be found, by the way, in the carefully selected clip. And then how about Craigslist? It offers something for everyone. Unfortunately, everyone also includes prostitutes, pedophiles, and crooks. And everyone is on Facebook, right? A half billion friends and counting. But many people were outraged when they learned that their private information wasn't so private after all. So are these merely compromises in the computer age? Or as one man suggests, is the Internet killing our culture? John Roberts spoke to that author on CNN's American Morning. John joins us live from New York. A subject matter, John, that we can all relate to. Yeah, and one that, that you and I discuss uh, all, all the time, and, and that is that there are so many great things that the Internet does and has to offer. But at the same time, Kira, as you know, there is this, this dark side where, you, where anyone's enemy can take something nasty and post it on the Internet. And maybe it doesn't rise to the level as it did with Shirley Shara, but it still gets out there among a certain community and does damage to that person's reputation. Imagine what would have happened if we hadn't taken a look at, at, at what happened with Shirley Sherrod and plumbed the depths further and found out that what had been posted on the Internet was not, in fact, reflective of what she said, would she still be without a job? Would her reputation still be ruined? That, that to some degree, is the effect of what many people might consider to be a Wild West of the Internet, where anybody can post anything they want about anyone. Andrew Keene is the author of The Cult of the Amateur, how blogs, MySpace, YouTube, and other user-generated media are killing the American economy, the culture, and our values. Here's what he says about th this idea that people can post whatever they want about anyone, and, and many times, probably more times than not, get away with it. What I think it reflects is a, is a certain sort of paranoia about media, an obsession with, with conspiracy, uh, a kind of a lunacy that reflects us, uh, an extremism, uh, a bitterness, but also a degree of responsibility. I think this case is interesting because it shows the worst of the Internet in the sense that someone printed a lie or published a lie which then was virally spread and almost ruined her life. But then part of the Internet and also mainstream media guys like you came to the rescue uh, and you sorted the case out. You showed that it was a lie you revealed the fact, the reality, the truth, which was actually the very opposite of what was published. But John, we can't always do that. I mean, there, it's gonna, there's going to have to be a point uh, in time where these people have to be held accountable. How about all these bloggers that blog anonymously? They say rotten things about people, and they're actually given credibility, which is, which is crazy. They're, they're a bunch of cowards. They're just people seeking attention. So what does this guy propose uh, that we can do about it? Well, well what, what Andrew talked about with me was this idea of a gatekeeper, but there are huge First Amendment rights that, that come, come into play here, freedom of speech and all of that. And, and he said that the people who need to be the gatekeepers are the media to check into these stories. But for every Shirley Sherrod story that there is, there's probably 100,000 other ones that never rise to the level of attention 
that we would look into them. So I don't know what you do about all of those people, and we, we see them, people who are bullied on the Internet, who commit suicide, others whose reputations have been ruined. Andrew was also pointing to companies that try to ruin other companies by posting false information on their websites. To this idea of anonymous blogging, we, we chatted about that a little bit off camera. And to some degree, the, the Internet is like a, a giant worldwide bathroom wall that you can write anything you want about anyone under an anonymous pseudonym. Now, somebody's going to have that information, but you know, I've always thought that if you're going to say something, if you're going to criticize someone in a public forum, have the courage to, at the very least, put your name on it. I mean, the better thing would be, if you've got a criticism for, criticism for someone, say it to their face. Right. But well at the very least, have, have the, whatever you want to call them, to put your name to it. Sure, I think that's what we all want because it, it's it's very unfair. And you know, we talk about writing on a bathroom wall, but come on, you can go, you can spray paint over that. That that's one wall <laughs> for not for the world. You know, the the whole world's not going to see that. I mean, we're talking about it's not it's not just freedom of First Amendment, and I know what that's what they all claim. It's it's freedom of defamation many times. And th what does Andrew say about is there going to come a point? where something's going to have to be done legally. There's got to be some point uh, where, where there's some accountability. A and, and companies, especially within the media, have to stop giving these anonymous bloggers credit or credibility. I guess that's you know, a better uh, word. As you know, the ubiquitous nature of the Internet and the way that it gathers together factions and divides others it, it, you're going to have allies of, of certain people who you know, comment or blog anonymously. Now, it's not to say that anonymous blogging doesn't have its place. I mean, if you're in a place like Iran or North Korea or something like that, anonymous blogging is the only way you could ever get your point of view out without being searched down and thrown in jail or, or worse. But when it comes to a society like ours, an open society, you know, do there have to be some checks and balances, not national, but maybe website to website on, on, on who comments on things. But we, we didn't really have time to get into what you do about those people, but it, it's just, it's a matter of, you know, you really have to be aware. You have to be aware of, of what you post on the internet, which is why I always caution young people, never post a naked photograph of yourself on the internet. But as for the rest of it, these are very thorny issues that we're going to have to deal with. Now, surely Sherrod may take this in a new direction if she actually does pursue sure, a defamation power, suit, as she said she might, message. against Andrew Breitbart. Yeah, yeah she I mean, she, she's, she's got the, she has the power now, and uh, she also has the profile to, to maybe bring this into a new light. So we'll see where this goes. Well, and a lot of people will jump on board, that's for sure. Uh, it's a subject we could talk about for a long time. Thanks, John. Well, harnessing the power of the Internet for politics. Thousands of liberal bloggers and activists sound off in the Las Vegas desert. And they're turning up the heat on Republicans and Democrats. We're going inside the Netroots nation.